Hi artists, welcome back to the Wallace Art Room. This is Mrs. Hewitt. Today we're going to continue our work learning about Miss Cloudy or Pauline Lockton and talk more about contrast. But this time, instead of using black and white as contrast for our inspiration, this time we're going to be using color. Let's check it out. Have you ever wondered how some artists are able to find perfect color combinations that just seem to work every time? It's not just art, it's science, and we call it color theory. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the color wheel and some basic formulas known as color harmonies to choose color combinations that are appealing, cohesive, and just look good. Using color harmonies, you can evoke certain emotions, create a mood, or add context to your images. So let's start at the beginning. You may remember back at school where you learned about primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. We are taught that the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. When mixed together, these make the secondary colors, green, orange, and purple. Take it a step further and you'll get the tertiary colors, yellow, green, red, orange, and so on. These make up the traditional color wheel that was created by Sir Isaac Newton and helps us to understand how different colors work together. So how do we use all these colors together? We can use our 12 basic hues on the color wheel, along with some easy to follow formulas to create an endless collection of color combinations that look balanced, appealing, and just work. These formulas are known as color harmonies. The first and easiest is a monochromatic color harmony. This takes just one base color or hue from our wheel and uses different shades, tones, or tints to create a group of colors. It's one of the easiest color harmonies to create and look simple, cohesive, and organized. Here are a few examples of Miss Cloudy's work where she uses monochromatic color theory to create harmony and a more organized feeling. Do you feel the simplicity of it? How does she use light or dark colors to create a mood? In monochromatic work, it is very little contrast to help create that feeling. Let's check out the highest contrast way to use color. Next, we have a complementary color scheme. This takes two colors from opposite sides of the color wheel, such as red and green or blue and orange. This type of color scheme is great for creating strong contrast in your image. Here we see more of Miss Cloudy's work where she uses complementary colors of purple and yellow, and here she uses red and green as complementary colors to create contrast. How does adding opposite colors change the mood of this piece of artwork? Today as I create, I'm going to be using the color wheel to pick out opposite colors or complementary colors. Here you can see orange and blue, green and red, and yellow and purple are complementary colors. So we are going to use these scales to create our artwork. Do you want to have high contrast or low contrast when you create? Here is the piece of artwork that I'm going to use as inspiration for my work today. We will be creating our own paper that has complementary colors on either side. If you want it to feel more of a monochromatic, you will just paint each side in a different way by choosing different colors. But here I have orange and blue, purple and yellow, and then I have reds or pinks and greens on the other side. The idea is next time that we are going to cut these into strips, fold them and manipulate them. So then as we create these sculptures, we're going to have complementary colors on either side. All right, so this is where the fun begins because we are going to do a little bit of a play with color. You are allowed to use any tool to create that you have available and your teacher is okay with. Uh, today I have paints out, I have mingo dabbers that are gonna add color that are big paint markers. I have markers, I have crayons. And I also have different kinds of strips of paper. I do have a full size paper, some paper towels to keep myself clean. Now the idea today is that I am going to start with my dry materials first. The things that don't make the mess, that I don't need to put on the drying rack. So I am going to start first with crayons or markers to color one side of my paper. When I do that, I make a plan. I grab crayons, which are dry, and I'm going to choose purple first. Now, once I'm finished with those, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to be using a wet material on the other side. In this case, I used paint and bingo dabbers. The thing that I did forget is to write my name and teacher code on my work because that also needs to go on the drying rack. Each time I start a new paper, I need to remember my name and teacher code and also starting the first side with a dry material. That way, as I flip it over, I'm not going to make a mess when I paint the other side. I'll place each paper on the drying rack, remembering my name and teacher code, I'll put my artwork in a safe place and I am ready for next week to create just like Miss Cloudy.